it looks out again. Well, then at that time, she turned around and she starts going back. Casey's coming up behind her, my son. And uh, <laughs> she said, go back. And he's like, what? He said, the pond's just right here. She said, uh-uh, something's back there. Go back. And he starts, you know, okay. So he starts going back and he turns around. And he said, I just wanted to see what she's talking about. And so I turn and I look. This thing has gone from wherever she said it was at. It was up on us about, oh, 30 yards. And he said, Dad, it was standing there at the long road. And he said, uh, the muscle you could see underneath its fur, the hair, uh, the girth on this thing. And he said, uh, it was just, he said, Dad, there's nothing you could have done. I mean, he said it was huge. In this episode of Bigfoot Society, I talked to Paul from Wilson County, Tennessee, about his multiple-year Bigfoot encounters that have happened to his children and other people in his community around the same area. I don't want to give too much away, but BFRO investigators have been involved with what Paul's been experiencing, as you'll find out as we go along in the story. If you or someone you know is experiencing Bigfoot interactions in the Wilson County, Tennessee that are similar to these, please contact me as soon as possible at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. And before we get started, I do need your help with something, and it is free. Please take a minute to subscribe to whatever channel you are listening to this podcast through, like the video, leave a review, and share this with your friends. Share the show wherever you can. It doesn't cost a thing, and it's how we're going to get to the moon, because Bigfoot Society is going to the moon. Again, I appreciate you taking your time to listen to the Bigfoot Society podcast, and as always, let's get on with the show. All right, Bigfoot Society, we've got uh, a friend on the line today. Uh, I've got Paul who has reached out to me about some interesting Bigfoot things he's had going on in his area. Uh, Paul, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Doing fine. And do you mind, uh, are you able to share with the listener uh, kind of whereabouts uh, we're talking about uh, region-wise? Nothing real specific, of course, but... Right, yeah, we're just, I mean, it's right in uh, Wilson County, uh, Tennessee, so it's uh, sort of um, to the right of Nashville, probably about 40 minutes from Nashville, and uh, it's a pond that we've been hunting on for years, and, uh, you know, I guess the first, oh... I'm going to say the first seven or eight years, uh, nothing out of the ordinary ever happened. Um, it just, you know, we went there and we hunted and, um, you know, every time, every once in a while you, you would see something kind of out of place. Maybe, uh, if we hadn't been up there, uh, for a while, you would see trees that were down across the logging road, you know, but I just chalked that up as being part of the uh, the weather and the tornadoes that come, come through. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we uh, that farm, uh, the people had owned it for, for years. It's, it's a century farm. And uh, so we, we basically... Uh, we're given, you know, hunting rights and you want to come up and hunt. So we also bush hogged and uh, took care of the place and anything that the people needed, we would uh, take care of. And uh, then uh, in 2010, me and my dad and my son and a friend of his, uh, we decided to go up and bush hog. As a matter of fact, it was just about this time of year, July. And uh, in 2010, we really had the cicadas here in Tennessee. It was really bad. And uh, so I remember that because we went up and we were going to Bush Hog, one of our big fields. And 
I told my son and his friend, they were probably about, uh, I'd say from about 13, 14 years old. I said, I'm going to do most of bush hogging. You know, my dad had gotten up in age, so I just told him to sit in the truck, you know, the air conditioner on or, or sit under. I'd park the truck, the truck up underneath a, a shade tree, and I would do most of the bush hogging. And the kids could go, you know, do what they wanted to. And they said that they wanted to go walk the logging road to, there's a, a little pond off the logging road, and they wanted to go check it out and see if there's any deer tracks around it because you know that area was always wet and you could see you know deer tracks and and uh just kids they they loved seeing that so i said okay so i made probably one good loop around this field this field's probably about three football fields long it's 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 a big field so as i'm coming around uh, coming back up towards where I started, I look up and I see the kids. I mean, they, they're running a full blast back down towards the truck uh, from the logging road. And um, so I, you know, I'm thinking, well, they didn't stay long. So I uh, see them heading towards the, the tractor. And uh, when they got down to me, I you know, stopped the tractor. And, and they were both out of out of breath and they were just you know you could tell something had happened and so i shut the tractor off and i said what's wrong you know my son looked up and he said dad dad big real big real big and i was like did you see a big buck i said we got a big buck up on here and he said no and so the friend with him she said no mr paul she said you know they call him uh uh bigfoot and i said what you know and uh he said dad there was nothing that you could do. He said, it, it was huge, big. He said, I said, wait a minute, calm down. Tell me what happened. And so after I got him calmed down, uh, she told me, uh, his friend said that we got to walk in the logging road and we uh, got to the pond and she said, I was leading, Casey was, you know, walking behind me a little ways. He was still looking for rubs or whatever he could find, you know, just being a kid. And so then we, uh, they, when they got up there to, to the pond, she said she saw something out of the corner of her eye move, and she looked, and there was a, a big tree, and she said something looked out the side of the tree at her, and she thought something's not right. You know, what? what is that? You know, <laughs> and so she stared at it and kept looking at the the tree and and so it looks out again well then at that time she turned around and she starts going back casey's coming up behind her my son and uh <laughs> she said go back and he's like what he said the pond's just right here she said uh-uh something's back there go back so he starts, you know, okay, so he starts going back, and he turns around, and he said, I, I just wanted to see what she's talking about, and he said, I turn, and I look, this thing has gone from wherever she said it was at, it was up on us about, oh, 30 yards, and he said, Dad, it was standing there at the long road, and he said, uh, the muscles you could see underneath its fur, the hair, uh, the girth on this thing. He said, uh, it was just, he said, Dad, there's nothing you could have done. I mean, he said it was huge. And uh, I said, what do you, what, what did it do? And he said, Dad, I'm sure it could have caught us. He said, because it went from there to to, to there so fast. And uh, he said, it just looked at us. And she said, it looked like it was chewing something or something. He said, the and uh, you could see its bottom teeth uh, like it was chewing uh, or it was either kind of a confused look or it just, you know, was just a weird look on its face like, okay. And so he said, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm scared. And I said, well, look, 
my dad, you know, he got out. He's kind of chuckling. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I said, Dad, if you want to make a round, I said, I'm going to get in the truck. We'll go up here and see where it's at. So we went up, and I remember when I pulled up to where they said that they were standing, I shut the truck off, and the cicadas, which are very noisy, were quiet. It was silent. And so I got out. Of course, it's July. It you know hadn't rained. There's no tracks. You know everything's dry, but eerily quiet. And I just I don't know if it was just the feeling. What I just thought, you know, let's just get out of here. So I got back in the truck. They're still in the truck because they won't get out. And uh, I go back and I told my dad, I said, well, if they're going to sit here with you and, you know, just comfort them, whatever, until I get this, this field done. My understand is on this day, the man next door to us was bush hogging. The man, was, which was on the left, the man on the right was bush hogging. So I thought that was odd, you know, all three of us out here bush hogging. And the only thing I can figure is the guys, it either, there's no hunting allowed on either side of us. It either got flushed out and it was going from their farm to our farm, you know, and boom, it sees that we're there and it's like, you know, okay, this has never happened. And plus, we're never up there through the summer uh, because it's very hot. And But we were up there that day, bush hogging. So we get back, and all the way home, the kids are kind of quiet. And uh, Casey came in to talk to me. And when we got home, and I said, Casey, I said, you know, listen, <laughs> you... You promise me, you swear to me that you saw something. He said, Eddie, I, I, I'm telling you. He said, I, I saw this. And he said, it's big. And I said, okay, so I got them searching on the BFRO, and I just did a simple report. And a lady called me, Ronnie Powell, and she said, Mr. Neighbors, and she said, I'm BFRO here in this county. And she said, uh, where did this happen? And I told her exactly where it was at, the road and everything. And lo and behold, she knew her landowners. And we got to talking, and she said, yes, I know exactly where you're at. And uh, she said, I'm friends with the landowners and for years. And she said, you know, I know where you're, where you're at. And she said, no, please let me un- let you know, do not ridicule your children or, or the kids, at least you know, my, your son and his friend, that they are real, they are around. And she said, I'm sure your kid, the kids were seen way before they saw it. They love watching children. They're fascinated, just like we would be with younger big, Bigfoots watching them. She said, they probably were seen before. And she said, I don't think they would take a child. Now, there's been different reports I know out there, you know, but she said she didn't feel that they were in harm in any way. It was just probably startled to see, you know, this going on on so much land. And so what they did is they had uh, a lady, uh, Sybil, uh, Sibylia, uh, who sat down and and uh, did some phone conversations with each of the kids, my son, his friend, and they did drawing. And she would send it, and they would say, uh uh-uh, that's not it. And she would send another one. After so many drawings, they finally said, that's it. And so with the report that's on there, there is a, two drawings of what these kids saw. So it is on uh, BFRO, Wilson County. And so this is what had happened, I say, the year before or around that time. When we would go deer hunting and we would get our deer and we would, the landowner would always say, this is where you guys feel your, your deer at. This is where I want them to be done. It's okay. It got to be where we could field dress our deer and go up to the house 
you show the landowner, hey, I got this one, you know, hey, it's a, that's a good one, yeah. And we go back and everything's gone. And I'm, I'm looking in the trees, I'm like, there's no buzzards. I'm like, if it was coyotes, they would probably still fighting over it. And, but I mean, stomach, liver, heart, gone. Oh, Paul, you're it saying like, everything is cleared out. Everything. So, you know, you think this thing took the stomach, it took it, it's gone. And so I'm like, wow. You know, you, you would think maybe it would have been dragged. So you would see blood, you know, kind of going a certain way. So that puzzled me. All right. The next deer that was killed, same thing happened. We go up, show them the landowner, we come back, gone. And I'm thinking something. My dad said, Bobcat probably got it. You know, he's we I said, Yeah, I've gotten a couple of bobcats over here, but that's fast for it to get that and and be gone. Because we've just been up here, you know, for what, five, seven minutes, something like that, you know, showing Lee and talking a little bit, and we come back and it's gone and there's no buzzards, you know. And so that went on uh that year. And so the next year, my son went and go to his stand by himself. And this is more that, you know, he's he's ready to get out there and get in that deer stand. And it was, uh-uh, you take me to my deer stand and you put me <laughs> in it, and then you go to your deer stand. I'm not going by myself, or I'm not going until it gets daylight. How old is he? I'm like, uh, at the time, he was 13 or 14. Okay. He's 25 now. Thank you. And so... He just wouldn't, wouldn't do it. So eventually, you know, I, I think more he talked to Ronnie because Ronnie did come up and Sevilla did come up and uh, they assured him there's nothing to be afraid of. And they said, basically, you, they probably watched you guys for a long time. And I said, it's weird you're saying that. I said, you're up here today. The day that they came, I said, you're up here today. I said, this is where we field dress our deer. I said, now, these woods right here, which we never hunt because they're too close to our camper and our ca our old cabin here. I said, because, you know, we, you know we're out here talking. There's not going to be any deer in the woods. I said, my son, I said, come over here. I said, let's walk up in here. And we went in there, and there's this teepee looking thing. And this farm... Uh, had the Confederate soldiers stay on it uh, back in the in the wartime, and the guys would get down in between these rocks, and that's where they would hide. And she's like, "Wow," she said, "You know, if this thing was staying right here, it could get down inside here in between these rocks, eat, sleep, do whatever, and could see you guys coming and going." Whenever you, whenever you play, you know, whenever you guys would do your thing, and she said, "This is, this is amazing." She said, "She said y'all never hunt right in here." I said, "No." I said, "Because right there, you see, there's our camper." And I said, "No, we never hunted in here." And uh, I said, "So this being built here, this you know, all these trees together." I said, "That was odd." So. Uh, after they left, um, she kind of really did an awesome job of assuring my, my son that it's okay to hunt. So we, the next year, no problem. My son went, we hunted that year. I did go up to one of my deer stands, um, and all the bamboo was pulled up. It wasn't mm -hmm. cut. It was pulled up. The bamboo was stacked together over in a corner of the rock wall. And I used to sit there on that rock wall and deer hunt and watch the field. Well, these, this bamboo, I'm thinking, well, look, if somebody pulled this up, they sure would have taken it with, you know, taken it with them. If they would have made cane poles out of it or something, why is it put sort of like a teepee, everything at the, at the top is all together? So I just thought, well, Maybe somebody will come and get it because I, I didn't bother. I deer hunt that day, and 
uh, came back a couple weeks later and it was gone. Every bit of it was gone. So that was odd. Uh, after that, everything ceased. There was nothing out of the ordinary that happened there. Um, just, you know, we hunted. Nobody, this went on for about two years. And then uh, I think it was three years later, my son, opening day of bow season, him and his friend, uh, went to their stand. One got in his stand. My son's going to his stand. And all of a sudden, right there on the hill, something screams. I came, and my boy calls me, tells me, he said, Dave, whatever this was that screamed, he said, you know, my buddy, you know, calls him on the, the little walkie-talkie and says, you just hear that? And he's like, yeah. He goes, man, what was that? And he said, I don't know. He said, but I'm I'm picking up paste to my, my stand right now. I'm getting, you know, in my stand. And he said, man, it's right right to the right of me up on this hill. Well, that day, they did not see any deer, did not see any turkey, which was highly unusual up there. It was just a dead day. Never saw any uh, movement of animals. It was just a quiet day after that scream. Um, nothing happened after that. Uh, we have never had anything thrown at us. We've never been... Uh, screamed at before we've never had any problems all right that was that went on for about four years nothing the man next door has sold his property and he sold it to a guy who has a lot of money who bought the property and two years ago this guy's from the city he starts tearing up the land over there and bulldozers, uh, backhoe, everything, and all the greenery is about gone. There's three houses built over there. There's an uh, airplane hangar. There's an airplane runway. Well, my son was at a local store down the street, and this guy pulled in, and they had a, some machinery. And my son said, man, this looks like you could go do some work. They were pump, pumping gas. He said, yeah, he said, man, we've been busy here for the past, past year. He said, uh, he said, really, it's right down the road here. And my son said, hey, are y'all down here on so-and-so's old place? He said, yeah. He said, well, we're the farm next door to you. We hunt there. And the guy's eyes got real big. And he looked and he said, let me ask you something. And my son said, what's wrong? He goes, he looks left and he looks right and he goes, you ever heard of uh, Bigfoot? And my son starts laughing. And he said, uh, I already know. And the guy said, what? He goes, you don't have to say anymore. He said, I already know. He said, I saw it. And the guy said, oh, my God. He said, you've seen it. He goes, let me tell you. He said, last week. He said, I've got all my workers there. And he said, I'm, I've got one or two that can speak good English. And he said, we're all getting ready to go to work. And he said, it's hot. It's summertime. So we come in early. And he said, it's fixing to get daylight. Everybody's getting their stuff together. They're on the farm. And this thing lets out a loud scream. Well, he said, all my guys just drop what they're doing. And he said, I get on my side by side. And I ride up there where I saw it. And he said, as I look across, there's something standing there at the tree line. And it's looking at me. I'm looking at it, and it turns, and it walks right into the tree line. And he said, I know what I saw. And he said, now my guys won't come in till 7 o'clock in the morning. They don't come in at 6 because they're scared. They're scared. He said, it scared them bad. And he said, one of them has told me that he has been screamed and growled at while he was working by himself. He said, so... Uh, I don't know what what it is or, you know, what. He said, well, I'll tell you what. He goes, you've tore its, its home up. But he said, they never allowed any hunting over there. I guess this thing felt safe. It's never bothered with us. I guess with us leaving our, you know, I guess when we leave the deer, the field dress, maybe that was a gift. They knew 
if they left us alone, you know, when we got a deer, they could have the liver, the the heart, stuff that we didn't take. So maybe that was the reason it never bothered us. Um, so this this year, this just this past turkey season, uh, we found some tracks, and this thing has moved uh, on on further down uh, at another farm, which backs up to ours. And while my son was turkey hunting, they come across some big tracks. And he said, he said, that's where this thing is now. He said, you couldn't get a dog to make it through the field. It is so thick. He said, I mean, thick, thick. And he said, the only way I can get down there to go over is by the creek. And he said, when I walk in the creek, I see these footprints. And he said, I left the guys with me. He said, I don't know what that is. He said, I know what it is. He said, I'm not going any further. So my son turned around and went back. And uh, so this thing has moved on. Um, I think it's a family um, because I've heard the man down um, down the road uh, found some tracks when it snowed here. That uh, it was, he said he went out to get his mail. And it had just snowed that night. And when he went to get his mail, he saw these tracks coming from the woods, going across the road into his yard. And he said, it looked like it was two adults and a juvenile. And he said, the two adults, adults went the right side of, of his house, went around, and the juvenile went the left. And he said, they both joined back up after they got past the house and went off into the woods. And he wasn't going to go you know, looking to find out what it is, but he did take some good pictures. Really, he put a, a $20 bill down right beside the foot just to show how big this thing, you know, the feet was on this. And, uh, but I've always thought that it had to be a family of them. You know, it just, I mean, I just had, I just had a feeling. And the only other thing I've ever had is, uh, happened, my son got a, a, a real nice buck and it was right at dusk, and I went to get the camp, the truck. I went to the same field that I bush hogged, and I went up to get to the truck. When I got out of that field and started on that logging road, I smelled, I mean, it smelled bad. It's a nasty smell, and I had a feeling of don't look left, don't look right, go, go get your truck and go do what you do. I just had a feeling I did not want to look left or right, uh, it smelled, and I thought coyote, because coyotes, they smell, and, but this was, this was horrible smell, and so I just kept my head to the ground, and I got to the truck, I got in the truck, and I went down and got my son's deer, and afterwards, I told him, I said, you know what, I said, well, I got basically on that same part of Logan Road that y'all had that sighting back in 2010, I said, something smelled horrible. I mean, and I said, I felt like, okay, keep going. Don't stop. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Just keep going and get in your truck and go get the deer. It just, it was a strong feeling of that. Um, that was, you know, a couple of years ago. Other than the footprints that they, you know, they saw back in uh, turkey season here, you know, which is the very back of the farm. Uh, we haven't had anything else happen. Uh, it, I imagine it's still there. It's just had to, to you know, relocate since this guy's bought the farm, and they're still doing stuff over there, still tearing up that land. And uh, you know, it, it's. I just wanted to know that it ain't us. That's a that's <laughs> you know, I, wild. Yeah. yeah. I got a I few got whistled at. Oh yeah, go ahead. Go sorry. Ahead. Uh, I got whistled at in the deer stand uh, last year. I was uh, in the deer stand, and I was on the back of the place, and it was about nine thirty. And I was, I mean, it's just like if if you're uh, hunting with a buddy or you're tracking a deer, and one of you whistles at each other, you know, it's, it's just a and the other guy will whistle back at you, and let you know where he's at or you whistle and say, Hey, I got blood right here. You know, we're, we're, we're tracking this deer. 
But this thing whistled just like that. And this was like at 11 o'clock out of the deer stand. And then another whistle comes at a three o'clock. And I look. And so I grab the walkie talkie and I hit my son up because it's hard to get cell phone coverage up there. So we just use walkie talkies. And I said, You whistling at me? He said, No, daddy, I'm still in the stand. I said, Man, do you think anybody's back here? I said, Because I just got whistled at twice one right in front of me and one to the right. And he said, Dad, that, that'd be a, they'd have to walk a long ways to get back here. And I told him, I said, I just feel uneasy. I said, something, you know, whistling that close to me. And I said, but it's so thick, I can't see in front of me. You know, except from, I guess I could see about 45 yards in front of me, you know, where if deer comes by. But that's the only thing I've had happen since, you know. You know, it's, it's, it gets kind of, which, you know, we're, we're getting ready right now, uh, getting ready to start planting and, and getting the, ready for the fall season so we'll see what happens <laughs> but that is wild paul i mean it it lines up with so many different things i've heard where someone starts digging up their property that's never been harmed and stuff just starts happening because the bigfoot does not want yeah. people messing with their place that's wild that's it it has stirred it up and I, have, I would love to talk to this guy again because it's been a while and just ask him hey has your crew been <laughs> have you guys had any more you know issues with this thing well you i was know, gonna that, ask you uh, if you had like oh, man i'd love to talk to that guy but you said he that <laughs> the creature moved to a farm that was closer to yours have you talked to that landowner at all yeah, that's who my son was with that day. Oh, okay, uh, right, right. He yeah. told my son, he said, you know, hey, if you want to hunt this place, I got access to it. And he said, it's right here. And so that day they started to go across this little, it's a small field and it was so thick. He said, you couldn't get a dog to go across there. And he said, well, how are we going to get to it? He said, I know where there's a quick creek and it'll bring us to it. So that's when they got down in the creek and started walking towards where they wanted to turkey hunt and came across the hmm. the footprints and he sent me some pictures and he said, well, we know where it's, it's moving and it can't, you know, I mean, it would take something to, to go through there. And of course, it's going to, of course, see you before you see it because uh -huh. it's just so thick. Uh, but when the kids were were seeing the creature way back. Did did they ever describe? Well, obviously they had to describe what it looked like when the mm -hmm. pictures were going back and forth, the drawings. But you know, some people I talk to, they say, "Oh, it looked just like a monkey," or it "looked more like a Neanderthal." Um, what kind of creature do you think you may have been dealing with through all this, if you had to describe it? My son, uh, he just said it looked, he just said big girth wise. You know, he, we talk about it every once in a while. And uh, he, he doesn't like talking about it because I know, you know, he, he does more hunting than I do now. I'm more of a fisherman. Yeah. And uh, he just, he don't like talking about it too much because it gets you where you don't want to go. <laughs> but he, uh, he just said, you know, the chest was probably four foot wide. And he said, I mean, it's just massive. And he said, I just remember when I looked, seeing the muscle and the girth on this, this thing. And my son has played football all of his life until he got into high school and messed up his knee. But he just said, wow, you know, this thing was huge. And he said, uh, the, it's weird how they, well, I guess they must have stopped and looked at it pretty long, just, you know, like in disbelief and seen it where it looked like they, they both said it either looked like its jaw was on one side kind of open. Uh, it could have been a puzzled look. It could have been chewing something. Uh, or, but they, you could see teeth and it didn't look mean. He said it didn't look mean. He said, I just know that it could have caught us because when it's here and I'm walking pretty fast down the log when I turn around and he said, it's already this close. He said, Oh, it could have caught us. I, I, there's no doubt in my mind. 
because it moves so quickly. Wow. I feel like this story is not done and there'll probably more, be more to it in the future. Uh, that's just wild. You must live in such a crazy area uh, in this um, part of Tennessee. And um, if, if anything else happens to, to you guys, please reach out and, and let me know. I mean. Oh, there's one other thing that happened. Okay. Gosh, I can't believe I'm it. Uh, this had to be seven years ago. Uh, my son, dating little girl, and he, uh, and my son, he loves to hunt and fish. He's always making sure there's corn up there, you know, and, and, and you know, until season opens, which, you know, you got to have it all gone one or two weeks before it opens up. But just like any hunter, you know, he'll put salt blocks out and everything. So he went up there, and after they rode around, and he was showing her, well, here's what, you know, this is where my my turkey blinds at and up here is where my deer stands at and this and just tell her about the place he gets out he tells her i'm going to unlock the gate he said be right back he said i gotta unlock the gate so we can get out and uh, she's like okay so he gets out and he unlocks the gate and opens it up and uh he must have struggled with getting the lock because it took him a while to come back and he gets back in the truck and she said uh, hey and he said, yeah, he, she said, you, he said, what? She said, you are a Bigfoot. <laughs> he said, yeah, why? You know, he was like, it caught his attention. Boom. He's like, yeah, why? She said, when you got out and you went over to lock, unlock the, the gate, she said, you sent them in woods over here. And she said, I just happened to look over and she said, this thing is watching you, and she said, when it saw me look at it, she said, it went that way towards the road. And he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He said, what did you see? And she explained it to him. And he said, so it's still here. And she's like, still what? And he said, back when I was, you know, he's got to tell her when he was 14 years old what he saw. And he said, you know what? He said, I saw this thing back that turkey season. He said, I was here unlocking the gate one afternoon, get ready to go home. As I was unlocking the gate, he said, I looked across the field at that man's property, and it walked the tree line. He said, I know that's not a cow. He said, I watched it, and it turned. And he said, to be how tall it was from that distance, it had to be a good nine, ten foot, and it went off into the woods. It was walking the book. The tree line he went he said so i guess it's still around here out back and i remember that remember we were just talking about you know me and you were talking about back so that did happen as well that is just another interest yeah i mean wow that's wild yeah man. so it, it, it and if it was over that way the road that the, the guy took the pictures of the footprint in the snow that's only about, oh gosh, 500, 700, about, well, two, two, uh, two houses down. So this thing must be really hanging out towards the back. But Ronnie Powell, you know, she knows them. She said, and it, it made, it really makes sense. She said, I think they, these things move seasonal when there's no hunting pressure. And we got a lot of blackberries up there, and mm. we don't cut them because we know that 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 feeds your turkeys, your deer uh, in the fields. We always go around the blackberries, leave them, and you know. And then when it comes cold, these things have gotten used to knowing that your your farm is hunted, so they avoid your farm. You've got guns, you got, but they know that you where you feel dress your deer. And she said they're smart, they're so smart, and I'm like. Wow. <laughs> she said, I think they, you know, summertime, they come over to your place. You know, you're not there. You guys don't, nobody lives there. And it just, you know, they're, they're safe. And then you just, like she said, you guys scared it or, or came up on it that time. Three farms together getting bush off the same day. You know, it made it move. Yeah, that's what I figured. 
It went from one farm to another. Man, I, I got to see if I can get in touch with, uh, with Ronnie or, or Sibila for sure. Those are, yeah. I've heard yeah, the names the before, but now. they, they've, I've never been able to chat with them, but man. Yeah. Ronnie's husband is over the Wilson County, uh, cattle association. Really, really nice people. Mm. And, uh, they, they knew the landowners there very well. And when she told me that she knew where I was at, I thought, oh my gosh. <laughs> she said, you know, and then I've never second guessed my son. Never, you know, what I mean? because me and my son, we, we're pretty tight. You know, we've hunted fish, through, you know, all of our, you know, lives. And, and uh, of course, he hunts more than I do now because I'm older. But, uh, you know, we'll sit down, we'll talk about things. And, and I know when he says, I saw that, or he, you know, this past year, he sent me pictures and he's like, Dad, <laughs> it's still here. And I'm like, okay. And I said, you know, you don't ever feel threatened. You don't ever feel, and he said, never. He said, I, I really don't. He said, maybe this thing knows me, knows us, know that we're not the ones that, that destroyed its home. Mm. I said, that's the main thing, that if we ever come across aggressive, I'm just going to mind speak to it and probably speak that I'm sorry. We did not destroy your home over there. That was not us. You know, this, you're welcome to you know, stay here. Don't bother us. Don't show yourself. You know, we, we're in peace, but they over the, they destroyed your home, not us. Wow. I, I think you mentioned already your, your son doesn't really like to talk about it, but if right. it, the, there's an invitation open, if he ever does, but I'm not going to push it, of course, but, right. uh, Right. Just throwing that out there, but um, Paul, thank you so much for for sharing this this wild series of events that has happened over you know since twenty ten and maybe yeah. even earlier. Um, uh, please, yeah, as I said before, reach out if if other things happen, and uh, I'd love to see you know what happens in this story next. But that's it. I'm glad I could come on and talk about it. And, uh, Hey, <laughs> I'll be in touch with you and, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll relay whatever ever happens, you know, cause I usually call, uh, Ronnie and tell her, Hey, it's back. Or this is what we found. And, you know, but thank God there's, it's not been aggressive towards us. That's, mm. that's a good thing. Here at Bigfoot Society, our goal is to provide a platform for those that have encountered Bigfoot to share their encounter in a safe and respected environment. But we need to hear your story. If you've experienced something that you just can't explain, please send me an email at BigfootSociety at gmail.com. Then we can start the conversation. I know a lot of you have not shared your encounter at all it's been 20 years and it's time that you get this off your chest and then you can get some well-deserved rest because i know you haven't been sleeping i understand what you're going through and i appreciate every one of you listening